Hey guys, this is Isaac from Contender Bicycles, and today we are going over cross-country bikes. These are the three favorite cross-country bikes that we like to carry here at Contender Bicycles, and if you are a local racer or somebody who likes to take long days in the saddle and cover ground fast, then one of these three bikes will be the one for you. Today we are going to go over in a comparison between the three and find out which one will work for you best to fit your ride style needs. So the three bikes we have here today is the Scott Spark RC, Orbea's OEs, and this is the Santa Cruz Blur. So the Scott is based around 120 millimeters of travel, front and rear, and some come spec with dropper post, some do not. This is the Orbea OEs. This one is a spec around, again, 120 millimeters of travel, front and rear, and every single one of those models do come spec with the dropper post. This is the Blur, which is has two versions. There's a Blur Cross Country and the Blur Trail. The Blur Trail is specced with 115 millimeters in, in the rear and 120 millimeters on the front, and the Cross Country version has 100 millimeters front and rear. All of these versions do come with the dropper post. This is the Scott Spark RC. The Scott Spark RC is Scott's dedicated cross country racing bike. It is ridden by none other than Nino Schurter, Kate Corney, and the rest of the Scott Strand mountain bike race team. You might have seen it at many, many World Cups if you like to follow racing, and it has plenty of wins underneath its belt. Scott Spark RC is a very clean looking bike. It's perfect for anybody who wants a bike that looks very, very good aesthetically. It wires its cables through the headset to get rid of some of those cables with a lockout on the dropper post if it does happen with the dropper post. And then the rear shock on this one is hidden inside of the frame. Being inside the frame, it kind of gives it the look of a hardtail. It makes for some very clean looking frame lines. This is the Orbea OEs. The Orbea OEs is also Orbea's dedicated cross-country racing bike, and it is centered around 120 front and rear, just like we talked about, so same as the Scott. The Orbea OEs also has fully internalized cabling through the headset to give it a kind of a cleaner look, but his shock is external. The only bike here today with an internal rear shock is the Scott. The external rear shock on this one, while to some people may not look as good, does mean it's a little bit faster to pull off and a little bit easier to service for that reason. This is the Santa Cruz Blur. This version right here is the Blur TR, so it has 120 in the fork, 115 in the rear. We will be talking a lot about the Blur Cross Country though. A lot of our viewers are here are from Utah, so you guys might recognize this bike quite a lot. It is raced by Utah's own Keegan Swenson, so it is a fairly popular bike around here as Keegan Swenson's a pretty big rider for anybody who likes to follow racing in Utah. The Blur itself, you might notice, has its cabling done through the frame and not through the headset, and it has no internal rear shock, and overall has much less proprietary parts on it. That is the purpose of the Blur. The Blur itself is meant to be a very simple, straightforward cross-country bike. There are a couple of different component packages between these three bikes. The base model of the Scott being the Spark RC Comp. Scott RC Comp has a 32 fork, alloy wheels, alloy bar, and SRAM NX drivetrain. The base model of the OEs is actually an alloy frame, so they do have an option for an alloy frame they call the Hydro Frame. That version uses Shimano drivetrain, alloy wheels, alloy frame, and alloy bar, but it still does have a dropper post. The Scott one does not. The base model of the Blur is a full carbon frame, and that is the Blur R kit. The Blur R kit has alloy wheels, it has SRAM NX drivetrain, still has a dropper post made by SDG and an alloy bar. Then moving on to the top end of the line, the Blur, so going back the other direction, the Blur has a very top end one. It's the Blur, it uh, has XX1 axis on it. It's got Fox factory suspension. It's got carbon Santa Cruz reserve wheels and a carbon bar, pretty much everything you could ask for. Moving on to the OEs, same kind of deal. Carbon wheels, full carbon frame, Fox factory suspension, XX1 axis, really nice dropper post. Kind of sensing a theme here. Exact same thing with the Spark. The top end one has Fox factory suspension, XX1 axis, carbon wheels, carbon bar. So they all have fairly similar top end models. The differences kind of in between those price points. With the Scott one, you will be paying a little bit more. The top end model is a little bit more expensive than the OEs or the Blur, but that comes from the wheel set. The top end Scott one has a Silverton SL wheel set, which is one of the lightest wheel sets you can get on any cross country bikes, and also one of the most aggressive and fast handling. The top end OEs is a pretty awesome bike, but it does have lower end hubs in the top end Scott. It doesn't have the integrated one piece bar like the top end Scott. So obviously the lower end OEs, uh, sorry, the highest end OEs is gonna be a little bit lower than the top end Scott, but that is reflected in the price point between the two. The top end Blur, on the other hand, is very, very similar to the top end OEs. They have very, very similar component packages and almost look like the same bike. The Blur overall is a more expensive bike than the OEs when you compare them comparison to comparison, kit for kit. 
The differences between these three bikes in geometry numbers will be fairly different. They are designed by different companies. So on the Scott side of the bikes, you're gonna see a 67.2 degree head angle. On the Orbe, you're gonna see a 67 degree head angle. And on the Blur Cross Country, you're gonna see a 68.3 degree head angle. These will affect how the bike rides. The Blur is gonna be the most maneuverable and the most snappy, but it won't be as stable at high speeds. The Orbea is gonna be very stable at high speeds, but it's not gonna be quite as snappy at lower speeds. And the Scott is gonna be fairly close to the Orbea in snappiness because its head angle is not quite that much different but it is a little bit steeper, so it might handle a little bit better than the Orbea at lower speeds. Between these, you will also find reach is a great number to look at how bikes compare. The reach on a medium blur cross country and a medium OES is the exact same at 450 millimeters, while the reach on the Spark is actually a little bit shorter, surprisingly, at 441 millimeters in a size medium. Between these bikes, you also see some differences in frame weight. The weight, weight of these frames isn't exactly confirmed because we haven't been able to weigh one as a frame only, but, some, but they are speculated by the companies. The Blur and the CC carbon version size medium should be around 19-ish hundred grams, depending on which version you get in which size. The Oise is gonna be around 1,740 grams, while the Spark is gonna be around 1,870 grams. Those were weighed with rear shock, but that is according to the company, so they can do things like weigh them with axles, without rear axles, with derailleur hangers, without derailleur hangers. So those weights might fluctuate depending on how those companies weigh them individually and how you might weigh them yourselves. But overall, these bikes are gonna be pretty light. The Spark and the Oise both, you can build up to around 22 pounds at their full end model, and the Blur you can build up just shy of 23 pounds. Between these three bikes, they will kind of suit a different ride style. While they all meant for the same purpose, cross country, depending on what kind of cross country you like to ride, it might change what bike you might want to buy. The Spark itself is gonna probably gonna be the best dedicated bike for XCO. XCO stands for Cross Country Olympic and it is around an hour and a half-ish long races. Those are pretty technical races for cross country. The Spark is probably gonna handle that the best. It has the longest chain stays of the bunch and it has that vertical rear shock placement which helps it track the ground very, very well. The Oiz is very similar in geometry to the Spark so it can definitely do an XCO fairly well. But with a little bit shorter chain stays and a little bit of a longer reach, it, it might be a little bit more suited to endurance stuff. So while it can handle XCO perfectly fine, this would also be a great marathon bike or a great bike for stage races. Both of these bikes are going to be great for racing and they're both going to be excellent climbers and great for an all day bike. The Blur itself, the Blur Cross Country is going to be better for smoother race courses as opposed to these two. With the more kind of traditional numbers you see on the Blur Cross Country, it will suit a smoother race course a little bit better because it's going to be a little bit more maneuverable and it doesn't need that extra reach and slackness on a smoother race course where it actually might be held back like these bikes would. On a more technical course, the Spark might do better than the Blur Cross Country due to that, but on a smoother race course, the Blur XC will definitely do super well. The Blur Trail, however, when you boost it to 120 millimeters of travel, it does lift up the bottom bracket and the top end a little bit and it slackens it out. And that Blur Trail is gonna be great as a kind of an all-around bike. If you're somebody who likes to race cross country on the side, but still likes to do lots of all-around riding, the Blur Trail might be a great option for you because it kind of suits an all-around rider a little bit more while still being able to perfectly find to race cross country. So those are gonna be kind of differences between the, all these three bikes. The Blur Cross Country itself is actually gonna be an excellent long distance bike. If you like to do trails like White Rim, Coca Pelli, or anything like that, where you're gonna have a decent bit of time underneath your belt, the Blur does have three water bottle cages. It has one right here on the down tube and also on the back side of the down tube right there. So having three bottle cages means you can carry tons of water, tons of nutrition on your body, and that makes for some very long rides. The Scott also has two bottle cages inside of the frame in the medium, large, and extra large, but it does not in a size small. The Oise has two bottle cages, but it has two bottle cages in all of its size ranges, which is pretty awesome. If you guys have any questions about the bike and are wondering which bike might suit you best, feel free to call into the shop. We're always happy to help out. If you want to test ride any of these, you're welcome to come down to our Salt Lake City store and we might be able to have one on hand that you can test ride. These are some pretty awesome bikes. We're always available. And if you like this video, feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much.